in the past I have expressed that I've never really wanted to go out and pick up Rainbow Rowell's work. I know that her books are really popular here on YouTube and I've seen a lot of really great reviews on all of them that she has published. Um, however, the content has just never really struck me as something that I want to go out and read. However, I was sitting in my local library recently and I could see these two books from where I was sitting and they were just on the shelf in the YA section and I was thinking, you know what, it's free, why not? So I gave two of them a shot. This review is only going to be about Fangirl and not Eleanor and Park, uh, which I also did read. Um, and I just want to say about this, I know a lot of people really, really love this story. Um, and I, I definitely thought it was good. I thought it was very, very well spoken from both angles for the age of the characters. Um, however, I do want to say, and this is the only thing I'm going to say about it, that I was so afraid for one of the characters throughout this entire book that I found it very challenging to be happy for both of them. And that is what very much threw me off about really enjoying this story. I thought it was a very clever plot. I thought it was very well engineered, but I was just so afraid for one of them that it made it impossible to enjoy anything else. So after I finished Eleanor and Park, I immediately launched into Fangirl, uh, which I was hoping that I could connect a little bit more with because it's not set in the 80s, it's set in present day, about uh, a year, almost exactly a year after I started at university. And I felt that I could identify a little bit more with this book since I think both Bex and I sort of classified ourselves as fangirls when we were in high school, and I don't know if we've really quit that. And for as lengthy as this book seems to be, uh, so is the list of things that I wrote down about it on the napkin um, that I had with me in the cafe where I finished reading this. Having heard this book lauded by so many people, uh, I wanted to go into it encouraged and with a positive attitude, uh, despite the fact that I had never really been motivated to go out and pick it up. If you're unfamiliar with the plot, Fangirl follows a girl named Kath, whose real name is Cather, uh, during her first year at the University of Nebraska. Now, Kath has a twin sister named Wren, uh, who is also there, and Wren and she have, are twins, and they have sort of just been attached to the hip all of their lives. Now that they're at university, Wren has changed her appearance, cut her hair. Uh, the two of them don't really look quite as alike anymore, although they are twins, uh, and has decided that she does not want a room with Kath, as they have all her life. Uh, but she does want to live with somebody else and wants to sort of break free of the whole twin best friend thing and be her own person, which is totally reasonable. Kath and Ren have been fangirls for most of their uh, teenage lives of the book series and then turned movie series Simon Snow, uh, which is about a young boy who does magic and battles many, many uh, villains and creatures. And if you are thinking that sounds like a familiar plot, you would be correct. I would assume that the Simon Snow world and genre is sort of the the Harry Potter of this novel and these girls are definitely fangirls. Beth and her sister have been writing fan fiction for a few years now and it is ultimately consumed Kath's life. She feels very very strongly about it. She's immersed herself in the entire universe of Simon Snow. She has the t-shirts, the whole shebang. It is her thing. That's what she wants to focus her life on and that is that is what she is doing here on the cover. Presumably she is writing some more fan fiction. Uh, Kath is a very popular fan fiction writer and has written many a uh, piece with her sister and they have just gained tons of popularity on the internet and that is where this story begins. So Kath moves in with her roommate that is not Ren and does struggle through her first semester or so at her university trying to finish her fan fiction before the final book in the Simon Snow series comes out. I want to say that I did enjoy this book. I enjoyed Kath as a very, very deeply complex individual. There's a lot going on with both of Kath and Ren's parents. Her mother and her father are not together, and there are two very different storylines that follow them in here. Uh, I thought they were incredibly driving to the plot. I think it was easy to see why Kath was the way she was and why Ren was the way she was and how they were both coping uh, with what happened to them in their past. 
I think this book had some really great dialogue. Kath definitely spoke the way I expected someone uh, with her level of social anxiety and her sort of mindset and constructed world to think and speak. Uh, Ren seemed to be a nice counterbalance for that. And I especially appreciated uh, Kath's roommate, Reagan, or Regan. I, I think it's Reagan. I say it Reagan. Reagan is surly and goes out of her way sometimes to put Kath in her place and to help her. Um, and I just appreciated all of Reagan's comments and advice and wisdom. I thought that she was an invaluable character um, and, and that this book would have been very different if she had been anybody else. Disappointing in a way was Kath. And I do recognize the fact that she is probably a character that is easy for many people to identify with. I know in a lot of terms of show social anxiety, I definitely identify with a lot of the ways that she felt because I went through a first year of college in a brand new place myself with no one, not even a sister, to be unattached to anymore. I understand that she had challenges from her past and her home that stuck with her and made things difficult. But her choice to submerge herself and perpetuate this reality of the Simon Snow world and sort of let that allow her to shut herself off from everyone else and not speak up when she had questions and not sort of ask for help when she was clearly thinking to herself in italics in the book that she needed it and say things that she really meant to. It was very, very frustrating for me to watch her not help herself. And I could understand where she was coming from and probably would have made very similar decisions in her situation if I were there. But it, it didn't seemed to help the plot. Her indecision and ineffectual rationale for a lot of things made her feel like the other characters were dragging her forward because she couldn't do it herself. And on top of the characters, we also had these long stretches of Simon Snow text, uh, both at the beginning of every chapter, which was an excerpt which I believe was supposed to sort of help set the tone or the idea for the upcoming chapter from Kath's perspective, but it didn't really seem to work for me. I was always struggling to make the connections there. They were very, very vague. And then there are these very long stretches where Kath reads her fanfiction, and all of that fanfiction is printed there for you. And to be honest, I skimmed through it because I had zero interest in the Simon Snow story and what she was writing and just wanted to get to the point of why it all needed to be there, all three pages of text from her fanfiction story. Um, I understand the book is called Fangirl and does deal with her fanfiction, but why we needed to read so much of it to make no point in the actual plot of the book was beyond me. Not only that, but the, the stretches of that felt to me like filler. Um, I, I didn't understand why there couldn't have just been more plot there, why we couldn't have had two or three paragraphs of this story and maybe an ellipsis and going to something else. And finally, it was the unabashed similarities to Harry Potter that Simon Snow held. I very much understand that Simon Snow is is basically the Harry Potter of this story. However, they then go on to mention Harry Potter in the story. And that that doesn't work for me. You can't you can't have Simon Snow without Harry Potter. And it doesn't really seem like they can coexist. And it, it there were there were so many parallels that it just it felt like such a pathetic attempt to to have something of that level without saying she really likes Harry Potter. She had to go and, and, and build another world that was vague enough that it held similarity, but not exact. Probably because of, of trademark copyright things. That totally makes sense to me why this had to be this way. But you can't have both things in the same book. It, it, that... No. No, no. No. And along those lines, the ending makes me feel like it's set up for a sequel and I don't think we're going to get one. 
I don't think there will be fanboy, for instance. You know, like little women, Joe's boys, little men. No, we're not going to get fangirl and fanboy. We're going to just be stuck with this and an ending that feels like there should be more, but there isn't. Books belong to their readers, yes, but I was very confused by the end of this and why there was this clock running and no one was able to meet it. <sighs> anyway. In the end, I would give this book 3 out of 5 stars. I think the characters were very real. They spoke as they should have, and they were relatable. Everything else, up in the air. That's where I'm going to leave it. I didn't want to particularly read any of this author's work, and I have, and I'm glad that I did because I feel like I am justified in my convictions now. Might try and dabble in some more canon just to make sure that I know where I stand, but I don't know if that will be anytime soon. Please let me know what you thought. Please let me know if you think that I am a blithering idiot who missed parts of this story, and if you think I'm totally off base, or if you are right there with me, or anywhere in between. Um, I'm curious to see what makes this body of work so, so popular, and maybe I'm just missing something and trying to go too deep. That is all I have. Thank you for watching, and we will see you very soon.